a game that counts as far as wins and losses are concerned. Special thank you to all of the school districts that came out and supported us. Um, we saw the home team, Oxford and school, school district and Lafayette uh, come out and support us. And But I know that it stretched even further. And, and so the atmosphere was um, intense and uh, we really appreciate it. And, you know, my talk before the game to the, to the team was, who are you going to inspire today? Because there's someone in that crowd that hadn't been to a women's game or hadn't seen Team 49 or known anything about it that may leave inspired. I just think young people are experiencing a lot of, experiencing a lot of challenges. I have my own that's in the fourth, uh, is she in the fourth, fifth grade. And uh, every day it's a challenge. And so I wanted our play to be an inspiration for them. We wanted the venue to be one where they felt safe and also had a good time. And I think we accomplished both. Questions for Coach? What do you kind of learn you know, from your team's performance today? I know it's obviously so early, the first one, mm -hmm. but seeing them get kind of that run like that, what's like the main thing you kind of learn from the on-court perspective at all? Well, uh, we've been playing for a while together, but we not like this. So we went to Italy and played. So there's not a lot that my team surprises me with right now. It's really holding them to the standard and making them perform every single time they step out on the floor. Um, I would love a pleasant surprise, but I see them every day. So, you know, we... I wanted us to make better free throws. I was really disappointed with that. And uh, I didn't think we shot the ball as well as I know that we're capable of. Uh, but for me, it's not much surprises when they do things well. It's about holding them accountable. Like Maddie said, you know, we've seen Zakaya do that before, but just not consistently. And so our job, my job is to hold our players accountable to perform in that light every single day. Maddie, 15 to 10. Well, I want 15 to 10 versus Oklahoma. You know, I want it all the time. So that is the expectation uh, moving forward and what we'll focus on next. You kind of ran away with it in the third quarter. Uh, your thoughts on your performance in the third quarter and also Kennedy Todd Williams kind of loosened up a little bit in the mm -hmm. third quarter and got to scoring a little bit. Did you see anything she was doing differently? I just think she settled down. You know, I think a lot of times when transfers come in, um, everyone expects them to act like they've been here, but they haven't, you know. So, honestly, when it comes to, like, high-level performance, I expect Maddie and Snuda and Kui to do that. They've been here. Um, KK, uh, you know, Rich, and, and Toddy, like, they need games uh, to understand the flow, the environment, what's expected. And so I expect to see all three of them come along every single game. And that's really why I played Toddy. I think I played her the most minutes because I just need her to be able to, um, you know, get into the flow. Also, too, you know, there's a lot of pressure from her side because – Everyone has these expectations. I'm trying to get her to, like, forget about all these expectations everyone has and just just do what Team 49 needs her to do because that's going to be good enough. Great crowd today. Uh, obviously, elementary school kids. Mm -hmm. Thursday night, uh, huge game with Oklahoma. I, I mean, are you expecting a similar type crowd and environment? Yeah. Obviously, that's what you want. David, we're a top 25 program. When I came here, everyone told me we needed to win. Win and they come. Win and they come. That's all I would hear, you know. And I, would, I was coaching just like I am today four or five years ago. But I don't know what else we need to do. And, uh, and I, I am optimistic that the Oxford community – the Lafayette community, surrounding areas will come out. Everywhere I go, they tell me, Coach, see you Thursday, you know. And it's competitive in Oxford. I know, because my daughter plays soccer. 
and she has practice on Thursday. But when there is a top 25 matchup, we need butts in the seats. We can't be a top 25 program without that type of fan support. And so I am looking forward to it. I think everybody be ready to go. And hopefully we do our part to make them want to continue to come back. Coach, KK kind of talked about setting the pace mm -hmm. in the third quarter. I guess, how does that happen? Like, nuts to bolts, how do you yeah. make a basketball team play or a basketball game at the pace that you want it to be played at? Well, I thought Queens did a great job of, like, grinding it out, you know. Uh, they pulled a me on them when I was at Jacksonville. If I was playing a team that I felt was better, I wouldn't shoot until maybe eight seconds left on the clock and just drive them nuts. And so we changed the tempo by pressing some just because we didn't feel like they played straight up. Um, and that was smart on their part. And so we uh, – we wanted to get stops and get out and transition. You know, our identity is to rebound, run, share the ball. Uh, I felt like at first we were just taking our time, overthinking, and I really want this team to just play. We're talented enough that I don't have to manufacture every point. You know, they just really need to play and be confident. And had we made 75% of our free throws and a couple more of those layups, we are in the hundreds scoring. So, you know, but you know what? I don't know that I want to look our best right now. I'm fine with where we're at. But now we watch film and we focus on what's next and uh, figuring out what we need to do versus a very good Oklahoma team. What did you think about your daughter's Twitter game today? I did not get to see it yet, but... Uh, I bet she's into she's she told me the other day she wanted to be an influencer so one day she wants to be a doctor then a teacher but now since we got a cap cut on her phone she wants to be an influencer so I'm sure she ran away with it. <laughs> Coach you kind of mentioned it but what about Snooder's play? Yeah and Snooder you know I had a talk with Snooder yesterday and I told her you know, her, her journey, she doesn't celebrate herself enough. She's so hard on herself because she wants to do so well, and I commend her for that. But Snuda is not supposed to be doing what she's doing. You know, she's coming from an area where they don't have uh, a plethora of Power 5 basketball players. You know, we didn't beat anybody out together. You know, she's truly self-made. And so, no, Snuda is very important to what we do, you know. And so I just told her no matter if she starts, comes off the bench, whatever the case may be, her presence needs to be felt every time she steps out on the floor. And I think she did that today. You know, I play a lot of people right now. Y'all know that. That's been my reputation early in the season because I'm trying to develop a bench. And so sometimes it's hard for my players to get in any kind of rhythm because basically they get three minutes and I'm pulling them out. But also, in the long run, that could be beneficial to us. And so I just want Snuda to be okay if I need her to start, to bring that energy, come off the bench, whatever it takes, because she's that important to us. Any other questions for Coach? Great, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks.